Hey you guys, welcome to another late night edition of the Summer Inventory Challenge. Sorry it's so late again. I will try to do them a little bit earlier. Oh, I don't think it even started. Welcome to another late night edition of the Summer Preparedness Inventory Challenge. Um, I will try to go a little bit earlier in future weeks. But I'm actually on vacation today, so we spent the day out on the lake. Um, so we're just getting back and getting settled. But I wanted to hop on live and talk about week two of the challenge. So I hope that you guys had fun last week with your inventorying of your emergency preparedness stuff. So I did most of that for my own planning before we left. And then um, I'm going to do my week two stuff when we get back. So I kind of crossed my vacation in between two weeks of the challenge so that I could still get them done because I need to inventory my stuff. So a couple of my highlights from last week, um, I did find one emergency meal bar that had been eaten by mice and I found the only thing that I had, I had two things that I had enough for my whole family of nine now. <laughs> I had 13 emergency blankets, so I guess we would be maybe warm enough. I actually don't know how well those would keep you warm in the cold winter. Um, and we had nine emergency whistles. <laughs> so I don't know why I had so many before, but I had, um, I did have enough for one for each pack, which is something I really wanted to have in each pack. So I guess that's good. Um, then it was kind of funny. It's like, depending on when I bought it, I had different numbers of things depending on how many kids I had at the time. So it was an interesting project to inventory what I had. And I did not get to put them all back together yet because I have loads of stuff I still need to buy, but I did make my list of everything that I need. So that was pretty fun. Um, I'll still share a couple pictures. I was meaning to do it, but things got crazy. So I will share a couple more updates hopefully before we get week two email out. So let's move on to week two. So this week we are going to be inventorying two things. So these are, if you know the food storage made easy baby steps, we have baby step one is shelving and baby step two is water. So the reason shelving is step one is because, um, if you're just getting started in food storage, shelving can feel actually very overwhelming. So when we first started, um, my old partner and I, we really had this idea in your food storage. So we with shelving and find some cheaper solutions that would work for our space. And so depending on where you're at in your own food storage journey, you may want those. Over time, I did end up getting four of those shelves that I had in my food storage. Um, it's giving me a weird message. So, and that worked really well in the space that I had before. I've kind of narrowed them down a little bit. So I did, um, I did do a few more traditional shelves now because for stuff that I don't use all the time that I just want to store, they fit better. I can fit more in a smaller space and my food storage room's a little smaller in my new house. So that's kind of what I did now. But in the beginning, I learned how to make, because you can do the plastic consolidators, the rolling little shelves that go on your pantry if you don't have room for a big shelf, but it's a pretty poor new mom. Um, two little kids. I couldn't afford that, so I made them out of cardboard, and I have some tutorials for that, so I will share that in the email that's going to go out sometime tomorrow. I want to say it will be early, but it will probably be late tomorrow night, just knowing myself. Um, but so you can kind of look at your space and figure out where you're going to do your food storage, see what you have for shelving, and make your list with that. So one of the things is I'm going to have some of my emergency supplies in my garage, and so I was, I sort of cheated and already did a little bit of this stuff before. Um, so you may have seen that I've been working on that in my garage. So I did have to get one more new shelf because one of the ones I brought from Utah when I moved to Pennsylvania, it was a little smaller than any one I bought and it kind of got damaged in the move and it was missing the shelf and it was not my favorite. So I am, I did buy a new one. I haven't installed it yet. So inventory your shelving, see where you're at, see what you need to get, look at your space, 
um, a lot of times I consider organization as part of this step. So if you need to figure out a new food storage room or if you need to rearrange something, this is the week to do all of that. So you are going to be, you don't have to do it all, but you at least have to figure out what you need to do. That is the agreement of this whole challenge. You can't get overwhelmed, but you have so much to do. You just have to um, figure out your plan. So then the second part for this week will be water storage. Water storage has evolved for me over time as well. I started with milk jugs, like empty milk jugs in my basement, because that's what I thought my grandma had. And um, my grandma's food storage, all her milk jugs actually leaked. And so when, when I learned that from her, I researched it a little bit and realized you're not supposed to store water in milk jugs. So then we bought some of these, those good big five gallon camping water jugs and I thought they were awesome. And I had them all on my floor in my basement and um, lo and behold, they leaked also. So I had, I actually got a lot of water damage in my basement. I had a bunch of boxes of Wonder Mills that I was supposed to be shipping out. They got water damage on the boxes. It was terrible actually. So be careful with what you do. You do your water storage and make sure that it's graded for long-term food storage or else you're going to want to make sure you stay up with your rotation and all of that good stuff. Um, so with water, a lot of people have their containers and don't have them filled. So if you already have all your containers, your job this week is to fill them. And I am guilty as well. So I moved in six months ago and I still haven't filled all my water containers. So that is that was a project for this summer because we had to rearrange our garage. So water has evolved, like I said, for me over time as well. Um, because depending on your family size, <laughs> water can be very stressful. So the recommendations vary greatly in how much water you should store. Um, mostly I hear three to 14 days of one gallon of water per person per day for drinking water. So if you do the math, now that I have nine people in my family times 14 gallons, because I like to be on the high end of that, because two weeks doesn't even seem like very much. So if there's a real problem and you don't have a good way to get another source of water, which now I'm in Pennsylvania, it rains a lot, so I want to look into more of like capturing rainwater, um, but I haven't done it yet. So I still want to have the full 14 days. Um, when I did the math, it was like 126 gallons just for drinking water. So I do have a three barrel tower, so I can stack them like this the 55 gallon barrels, but it's kind of a pain to put it all together and it, all of the pieces link them together so you can fill one and it fills all of them. Um, but it's not set up in my garage yet. So that's my project. So I know what I have mostly for water. Um, and then I also, so that will give us like 165 gallons. So that should cover drinking, um, but also for short term emergencies, it's a pain to get into those big barrels. So I have a lot of water bricks, which I will share you guys a link to those. They're one of my favorites for just short-term water stuff. They can stash anywhere. I like to keep some of those on each floor of the house so that wherever you're at in your emergency, you can have quick access to water. They stack like Legos, so you can stack them pretty high. Um, so I have a big stack of those that I just need to fill. If anybody else is guilty, about not filling their water, you can comment below so that I don't feel bad, but I do have the excuse that I moved. But it's just running out of excuses since it's been six months, almost, yeah. <laughs> so inventory your water storage, make sure you have enough containers. Um, make a plan for getting more containers. You can store in two liter pop and juice containers if you rinse them out really well, um, they'll do okay. I would be a little hesitant for super long-term storage for that. Um, but if you kind of get into a rotation, I think they should be fine. Uh, there is some resources on water purification that you will probably want to read. Um, and I will share links to that. Otherwise, you got to really be on top of water rotation. In some of my seven-day challenges, um, which is where we practice emergencies for a week every September. It's really fun. You should do it if you haven't before. Um, but I've opened up stored water, a couple of years old stored water, and there was like algae in the top on the lid. So that's something that you want to make a plan for. So either rotate, make sure you use some kind of additive that can preserve it for longer, or have a plan for purifying it when you go to use it. So even if it had algae in the water, I have 
some really good water purification systems, um, or you can just boil it and filter it to, you know, whatever. So that is a few things to consider. So this week, figure out your shelving situation, figure out your water situation, decide what you need for your family, figure out what you already have for your family, and make a plan for what you need to still get. And at a minimum, if you have any water containers in your house, fill them this week. And post a picture of your water. You can share pictures of your water. Jen says water is one thing you never stored. That's terrible. Oh, you can also find um, things in your house where water sources you can use, maybe not even for drinking, but for other things like cleaning, like your water heater is a good source of water. Or if you have a hot tub or a pool, there are different ways you can do use that water as well. Um, the back of your toilet bowl, you can use that water, not the inside thing, the back thing, where it hasn't touched the toilet part yet. So there are, those are also some good things to think you may have more water in your house than you thought. And I did promise a giveaway. So last week's giveaway winner, so I went through everybody that commented and participated and shared, and I picked a winner and I'm actually super happy because the winner was, well, the winner is Linda McNeil, and she is our moderator. You probably see her in the group all the time, um, and so she definitely deserves to win that prize, and it's funny because she was actually telling me she was going to be buying several of the planners, the Prepare My Life planners, so that was last week's giveaway. So, Linda, yay! You won! Um, so let me know where you want this one sent to, and if you didn't win and you want to buy one, I will give you guys a link to that as well. And then next week's, or this week's giveaway, so all you have to do is join in the conversation, post where you're at with your, um, with your inventorying, uh, you can share pictures if you feel comfortable with it, or share something that you've learned throughout the week, during, and you can comment on the post that I do, or reply to emails, or comment on Instagram, and I pull all those uh, names and draw from there. So anybody can win that's participating. And the prize for this week will be, I was debating, I was gonna do a consolidator, but I could also do a water brick. What would you guys rather have, a water brick or a consolidator? Maybe if enough people uh, participate, maybe I'll do one of each. So it will be a surprise. So let me know what one you would rather see as the giveaway this week, since we are doing two, um, two kind of broad topics, it might be fun to do one of each. So maybe I can split it up and if you're commenting about the shelves, you can enter in that one. If you're commenting about the water, you can enter in that one. We'll see. We'll see how I feel after uh, I get home from vacation and get it all figured out. So that's all for tonight. Watch your email. Um, if you have not signed up for one of my email lists, the, there should be a link. I put a link in this video comments. Uh, to sign up for the challenge in general and then you'll get all the emails each week so I will be sending out the email tomorrow sometime because I have to download the this and get it all up Jen I will be sharing make sure you're on my email list because I will send all the helpful lists for every links to everything I talked about the water bricks are like three and a half gallon containers that water can store in for a long time because they keep out heat and light and I love them. They're one of my favorite things for water storage and they have spigots so you can just put it on your counter and use it. I've got a really good video. I'll post it. Anyways, I am going to try to get some sleep because vacation mornings come early around here because people are pretty excited. So I will talk to you guys next week on Monday. I will announce the winners that Monday. And then the next challenge, you know, will go out the next week. So keep an eye on your email sometime tomorrow. It will probably be later in the day. So don't be worried if you don't see it uh, right away. All right, you guys, have a great night. And if you have questions, if you're watching the replay, which most people will be watching replay because I know I filmed this super late, sorry. But I will answer uh, comments during the day tomorrow as much as I can when I have service. Have a good night. Peace out.